What is soft matter? Matter in general can be categorized into hard solid, watery liquid, and blowing gas. Where is the soft matter in this picture? Let's try to understand this new regime of matter by asking following three questions. How does the microarchitecture of soft materials look like? More importantly, how understanding such microarchitecture of soft materials helps scientists or an individual to tune the property of soft materials for human benefits? And of course, where do I see the soft materials in my day-to-day -day life? For this, allow me to vaguely separate the soft materials into following four categories. First, polymer. Second, colloids. Third, surfactants. And fourth, liquid crystals. First, polymer. Generally speaking, polymer is a long chain of molecules or spears hooked together. Try to imagine a chain made of paper clips connected. The individual paper clip is called monomer and the chain is called polymer. Does that mean it always has to be a linear chain? It is like asking does your earphone wire never get entangled? Of course not. Those linear chain gets branched like tree and sometimes even get cross-linked. Now you might be thinking, microscopic world of polymer hmm, is interesting but how does polymer look like in bigger picture in my day-to-day -day life? You are surrounded by polymeric materials in this modern era. The so-called plastic in our regular life are most of the time polymer and their composites. From water bottle to glass looking transparent seats used in your window. From drinking plastic glass to food wrappers. From the rubber used in your car to the cosmetic you are using have a polymer in it. Such diversity in polymer comes from its microarchitecture arrangements, which is the result of its chemistry. Let's get back to our picture on architecture of polymer. For example, if you have a polymer made of same material but one is linear and another is branched. The branched one is more viscous. It means you can make your material more viscous by branching the linear chain of polymer. What if you want to make your material more elastic or solid looking? Then, cross-linking the linear chain is the good option. Some other polymer has adhesive property, the one that is found on the sticky side of its costing. Some acts as a lubricant in motor oil. Intentionally changing the microarchitecture or changing the building block of architecture by replacing one atom by another atom gives the diverse output for polymeric materials. Thus, understanding how this soft matter behaves help scientists to tune the polymeric materials according to our need. Such materials which has been processed by scientists in order to fulfill our requirements are called synthetic materials. But nature also produces soft materials in its own way. They are known as non-synthetic materials. For non-synthetic polymers, you don't need to go far to find it. You can find it in your own body in the form of protein and DNA molecule. Protein are long linear chain made of different sequence of amino acids. In principle, they do not stay in this long chain structure. Instead, they are crumbled or folded into some specific structure doing some specific function. Similarly, DNA and RNA are made of smaller units called nucleotides carrying the genetic information. A stretched DNA can be up to an order of meter, but again it is all folded up in human cell. Mother Nature uses polymer or evolution adapted properties of polymer in a very sophisticated way to do the desired function. Studying soft matter physics allows us to undertake the path of nature. Thank you for watching.